Hello, and welcome back. This is Deepa Sitaraman. We now move on to Module 3, Some Elements of Communication. These elements of communication include verbal and nonverbal cues, listening, feedback, and written communication. These elements of communication give additional meaning to our message above and beyond the actual words used. We will discuss the contribution and verbal and nonverbal cues when we are communicating. What you see is a pyramid in blue on the right side on the image on the screen. This pyramid talks about how we commonly perceive the importance and impact of communication. When we talk, it is widely believed that body language makes up a large percentage of our communication. Tone comes next, and this is how we speak, how we use the words we say, how we modulate our voices, how we inflect our voices. And then finally, at the top of the pyramid are the words we use. So it seems that the actual words we use do not convey as much in our communication as our tone or our body language. All of these put together, of course, convey communication. This is commonly believed, but this is not the only way we communicate. Sometimes we communicate over the phone. Sometimes we have communication when we're not face to face. In those cases, body language or physical gestures may not matter as much. It is in verbal communication that our nonverbal cues become important. When we communicate verbally, what we say is important, but how we say it is even more important because body language and tone convey our ideas to the other person as to what we are thinking or feeling. Therefore, it is very important to pay attention to nonverbal signals, both from the perspective of a listener, because it offers us further clues about what the other person's internal situation may be beyond the words they're using. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? But also, it cues us in to the nonverbal signals we give out when we're expressing ourselves. Our body language gives clues beyond spoken words, such as what we are gesturing toward, what our body movements are indicating, how are our arms, are they crossed, are they open and relaxed by our side, what about our facial expressions, are we making eye contact, have we thought about personal space and our posture? Is it open and inviting or is it closed? It is important that when you communicate, you think about all these issues. You think about how you're conveying ideas without intending to, unconsciously. How does your body movement reflect what you're thinking? What do your facial expressions say? What do your hand gestures say? Do you make eye contact? Have you respected the other person's personal space? Or are you invading it by moving too close to the other person? What about your posture? Have you shown that you are interested in listening to what the other person has to say? Or do you have a closed off approach? Think about all this the next time you're communicating and you will definitely see an improvement in the way you communicate. This moves us along to the next aspect in communication. This has to do with your listening skills. What is listening and what is hearing? Do we know that there is a difference between hearing and listening? Hearing is what we do with our ears. Listening is what we do with our mind. In communication, listening is even more important than talking. When you listen, you pay attention to the other person's verbal communication. You should not be thinking about what you're going to stay, say next or about anything else. We listen with our mind and our ears. Remember, listening is more important than talking. It is the most powerful way to connect to a person. 
when you listen attentively, the other person also pays attention to you. This part of communication, fortunately, is completely under your control, and often it determines the outcome of the communication. When you listen clearly and actively, the other person reciprocates and responds in kind. Good listening skills lead to better understanding and fewer mistakes in communication. There is more satisfaction for all parties involved in the act of communication. There is also higher productivity by increased sharing of information. These are the principles for effective listening. Stop talking and listen. Remove distractions. Listen attentively. Listen actively without interrupting. Make sure to put the speaker at ease. Be patient. Have empathy. Try to separate what is being said from the style of delivery. Listen for the main ideas. Paraphrase or reflect back to make sure that you have understood the big picture. Give constructive feedback. Most important, make sure the speaker feels comfortable speaking to you. A very important aspect of feedback is to remember to not be judgmental. Be impartial. Also, while listening, ask open-ended questions and be attentive to the speaker's nonverbal language. Use these ideas when you communicate next, whether it be in your personal life or in the professional sphere, and you will certainly see a difference. When we talk about feedback, we have to remember that feedback is an integral process in the act of communication. Both giving and receiving feedback are equally important. Feedback refers to a response from the audience which gives the presenter an idea as to how his or her ideas are being received. Feedback helps people learn more about their own communication skills and the effect their skills have on the other party. They can use these ideas to adjust and make changes to their own act of communication as needed. Feedback can be both verbal and nonverbal. The ability to provide constructive or helpful or useful feedback and to use feedback received in a positive way is an important part of effective communication. Think about it next time you communicate. What is the other person saying to you? Is the person speaking to you and offering feedback? Or is the person offering feedback using non-verbal non cues or gestures? When giving feedback, think about these aspects. You want to be specific. You want to focus on the behavior, not the person. You want to focus on things the other person can manage to achieve. Think about the timeliness of the feedback. Share information or experience so that it is useful. Don't overload. Make sure the other person understands what you're saying. Clarify. Check back. Ask questions. Remember, you give feedback to help, not hurt. Otherwise, feedback is of no use. Avoid being judgmental. Use positive evaluation. Be impartial. Just as you have some aspects to remember while offering feedback, you also need to receive feedback in a similar manner. You need to welcome feedback as a constructive way to help you develop and improve your skills and performance. You want to really listen. Don't argue. Do not interrupt. Try to be receptive and calm. Let the other person finish without interruptions. Remember, they are trying to help you. Seek clarifications when in doubt. Be sure you understand what they're actually saying. Feedback is one of the best ways to help you improve your communication skills. So pay attention. We now move on to the last aspect we will be covering in this module. That is written communication. What makes for effective writing? That is what we will examine 
in this section. But before we talk about it, why is good writing important? What is the importance of making sure your written communication is well done? Good writing skills are important to communicate your message with clarity and ease. When writing, you can reach a much larger audience than with face-to-face -face conversations. Think about the social media and the impact that has. A well-written resume is essential to get called for a job interview. And when you start working, you probably will need to write reports of your project, a trip you've taken, or a proposal you're making. Good writing skills are also important when communicating with your friends and others through messaging, texting, social media, and in other ways. Remember, good writing skills create an aura of professionalism and credibility around you. People take you more seriously when you pay attention to your writing and you take your own writing seriously. This is an important aspect of communication. And finally, some do's and don'ts of effective writing. Make sure anything you write, you check your grammar, spelling, and punctuation. When you use poor grammar or spelling, it reflects on your ability to communicate and creates a negative impression about your abilities. In fact, some employers will reject job applications that have spelling or grammar mistakes. Also, always double check your writing by reading it aloud. Make sure it's appropriate in content and style. Use words and vocabulary that would be appropriate for the audience it's intended for. Use simple short sentences. Use the direct active tense. Convey your main point up front in the document. These are some simple ideas to keep in mind when you're writing the next time. Think about it. Wouldn't your resume improve if you used some of these suggestions and tips? Act upon it and you will certainly see your communication improve. Good luck.